Hey there trainers, welcome back. You're with Pewter City Gym and we're going to go ahead and carry on with our playthrough of Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth today. How y'all doing? I hope you had a fantastic couple days. So we got a brand new shirt. Kind of feeling it, kind of loving it. Matches my pants. Let's go ahead and take on a, a, uh, a literal quest from the government. We can get a farm development kit. We can get a whole other island, I believe, from, uh, from getting one of those. I'll explain all the details. The client this time is the local government that takes care of the utilities for Nakano. Basically, it's a bureaucratic agency. Why are you so shocked? Of course, we specialized in the supernatural and complex cybercrime, so we usually have a very specific clientele. But we cooperated very well with Detective Mariyoshi's police force, so they consider us to be a pretty good detective agency. So we've received a case from a public agency. Quite a rare event. This case was originally discussed by Detective Mariyoshi with the government agency. It's all a bit special, so Detective Mariyoshi passed us down to the government agency like a sort of ace up his sleeve, and now it's our case. Got it? Sure. Good. The case is to unlock a gate in the Nakano underpass. It seems the gate is locked due to some electronic glitch and can't be opened. Huh? What, you don't know about the Nakano underpass? It's a facility that houses the equipment used to provide Nakano's public utilities, such as power, cables, water pipes, and so on. They are moving forward with a plan to improve the look of the city center above ground by housing the public utilities underground. Looks like the visible power cables and telephone poles are set to disappear in the not-too-distant future. Underneath Nakano, there is a vast complex of tunnels, so there are, of course, many entrances. One of these entrances is the place where the gate we need to unlock is. It's a password-protected electronic lock, but it seems some time ago it locked for no reason, and no one has been able to open it since. They contacted the manufacturer, but they gave up. It need, if needs be, they will destroy the gate, but obviously that would incur serious costs. While the costs were discussed, a weird groaning sound was heard coming from the other side of the gate. It seems something strange is going on. The manufacturer had a bad feeling about it and didn't want to open the gate, but the government suspected criminal activity and called Mariyoshi. I see. So then the buck passed to the Karimi Detective Agency. Well, after all, we have the best people for the job if you want to access a place that's off bounds to most. This is actually a good opportunity. I've been wanting to investigate the rumors surrounding Nakano's underground system for a while. The gate in question has an electronic lock, so naturally there's a cyberspace inside it. You're the only one who can break into the gate without destroying it. We've already received permission from the government to access the underpass. Alright then, shall we go and find out what the real situation for this underground gate is? Where is that groaning voice coming from? What kind of strange world lies beyond the gate? This is going to be so much fun! Huh? It's an underground gateway, so there will just be an underground tunnel behind it, right? Hehe, <laughs> have you ever heard of the stock stochastic process in quantum mechanics? I guess it should tell you about Schrodinger's cat. Until we open up the gate, we cannot know if we will find an underground tunnel on or the void of space. Until you open that gate, the world is in a flux of overlapping possibilities, so just try to enjoy it. Let's go. The case is a simple matter of unlocking the gate, but what's behind the gate? Your job is to find that out. Okay, so let's go. Okay, Nakano Underground. Ooh, looks spooky. Alright, let's rearrange the team a little bit. Um, well, actually we're looking pretty okay. I do need to get Dratini's cam up and... There we go. Actually... Okay, there we go. All healed up. Let's go. Did you arrive at the underpass? The gate we need to lock is inside. The control panel should be beside you. Do you see it? Connect, jump into it, and unlock the gate. Let's go. 
What happened? What? Connect jump isn't working. That's strange. It's an electronic lock, so there should be some kind of network inside it. Perhaps it's just that you didn't activate the connect jump properly. Right, I think it's time we verified your ability to perform a connect jump. Raise your hand. Now concentrate. We are. Now what? That's it. 30 minutes later. One hour later. Several hours later. 100 years later. <laughs> I don't think it's that long. What were you doing just now? Whatever you're doing, it seems like it's not working. Oh, nope, there it goes. Oh no, it looks like I can't, can't verify it. Well, it seems like you can only connect jump if you feel disappointed. If I were to post a theory on how your connect jump works, your ability locates a digital wave, piggybacks on it to the target's location's digital space, and then enters it. It can be a network, a PC server. It doesn't matter what the target location is. If it has a digital space, then you should be able to access it. However, there seem to be certain limitations when interfering with the digital wave. In other words, when you can, you can, and when you can't, you can't. What we've determined is that you connected before by chance, even if there are specific reasons why you were able to each time. But simply, cause and effect are connected to the digital waves. Wait a second, how you could you connect jump this time then? I don't have any proof to support my answer, but perhaps there were others like you who tried and failed to open the lock and were disappointed. Your disappointment is definitely key. I've rambled on long enough. Please get this lock opened as quickly as you can. Alright, let's go. Well, you know what? Let's see if we can do any... Oh, any digivolving, I was going to say. Oh, gosh, they're babies. Why are we beating up babies in a sewer? Go to the Digilab! Because I kind of feel like... Yeah, we're at 60 of 60. Don't want to do that one. This is the one that we want. No, this is the one that we want. Oh, that's weird. Okay. So, defense 60 and then cam 100% XV mon. Ooh. What's this? Oh, it's Tyrannomon. Don't want that. Or not Tyrannomon, Triceratomon. Yeah. Let's see. Cam 25% is required. Let's go. There we go. XVmon. Go ahead and move it to move it to the Digi Farm. We can. Okay. Lily Mon, cam fifty percent is required. All right, back in action. Oh, I see a, a data point here. I think we have to copy and paste this one onto the yellow key uh, pot. Yeah, copy and paste.
So now we just gotta find the yellow key port. Ah, tiny, tiny babies. XV Mon's so cool. Okay, we got a couple little level ups there. Nope, it's not this way. There we go. Copy and paste. The door should be unlocked now. Let's head back and check. Ah, missed. Come on now. So it was back over here, yeah. Lots of Tokemon in here. Going to the Nakano Underpass. All right, we are here. Ooh, we got the digital wave. It's the first one we've been into without Arata. It seems you've managed to unlock the gate, so thanks for that. It must have been easy for you, given your skill. What, there's a bit of a labyrinth in the underground tunnel? What do you mean by a bit? Is there any sign of a Digimon or an Eater in there? I see. It is strange to see just a small section of labyrinth. Hee <laughs> hee, I know we said we couldn't know what we would find, but I wasn't expecting that. I believe we have witnessed a special digital wave occurrence. It's as if some kind of current... I see. This is definitely a ley line. Have you ever heard of ley lines before? There are many in Tokyo. They're also called dragon chains. Dragon signifies the undulating landscape, the hills and mountains. The dragon chain is what we call the flow of the land spirit. It's well known that Sosei Tenkai, advisor to Leyasu Togukawa, turned Edo into a great feng shui city. It is said that he built a waterway and path to lead the chi from Mount Fuji in Tokyo Bay to Edo Castle. A particular note in this instance are Kan Eiji and Asakusa Shrine to the northeast, and Zojoji and Hie Shrine to the southwest, all big religious institutions. In Feng Shui, those directions are thought to draw negative energy their way. The shrines hold big festivals to purge and expel that energy. And if you look at the lines that connect Buddhist temples like Kan Eiji and Zojoji and Shinto Shrines, Asakusa and Hie, you'll find they cross right inside old Edo Castle, home to today's Tokyo Imperial Palace. It's really quite fascinating to see. <laughs> Nowadays, the waterways have been swapped out for rail lines and radio towers dot the northeast and southwest. You could say we've finished what Tenkai started. Viewed from the eyes of current society, those rail lines and radio towers are artificial ley lines that supplement the old roads and waterways. Naturally, where you're standing underground constitutes another ley line running through Tokyo too. Not just any ley line either. The one that's believed to emanate from Mount Fuji is supposed to run right through there. The man-made tunnel layered on top of it allows the digital waves to keep flowing in perpetuity. It's really a peculiar thing going on down there. And that's what's producing this quasi-labyrinth you're seeing before you. 
Knowing that, those weird voices that people are supposedly hearing probably belong to Digimon that are appearing as a result. I could go on for a while yet about this subject, but you at least somewhat get what I'm saying, right? Yes. Aha, I'll take that to mean you understood it well enough, then. At this point, your work is essentially done, but we can't exactly just ignore this newfound discovery of yours, either. Why don't you go a little further in and check things out for me? Thank you, I would love to. Alright guys, let's go. So it's just a big long corridor and there are random battles in here, same as anywhere else. We're gonna run through this little digital fuzz, ooh. Oh, The tunnel just keeps going on, you say? If it stays on course like that, you're going to end up in Rapongi, which would mean, hmm. You know, this reminds me of something else I've heard about before. As I mentioned before, Tokyo's ley lines stem from Mount Fuji, which is, of course, not all that much of a coincidence given that it's a sacred place. And the energy takes old highways like the Koshu Kaido and the Takaido to get to Tokyo from Mount Fuji. That energy joins up with underground waterways going along the highways that carry Mount Fuji's snow melt to Tokyo flowing into the city together. One theory holds that this first oh that the first place where that water appears above ground after reaching Tokyo happens to be nowhere else but Nakano. Put simply, all the ley lines that flow throughout Tokyo could well be coming out, of, out on our own stomping grounds, believe it or not. Wouldn't that be amazing to think about if it turned out to be true? Stop right there, don't go any further. You're standing at the border of the municipality. Go any further and you'll be in central government territory. That's a hive we'd best not poke. Color me intrigued, though. That's a heck of a thing to stumble into just walking around inside that tunnel. We aren't prepared just yet to pick that sort of fight. There's still too much we don't know. This little tangent of ours has gone on long enough, I think. Head back the way you came and regroup at the office. Okay, so we don't get to do too much in the underground today. Though it's not as strong as we're used to, that tunnel is causing a digital shift. We should probably keep it locked up like before, after all. I have no idea how I'm going to explain all of this to our client. No matter how you spin it, it'll probably all be a lot to take in. I wouldn't be surprised if we come away looking even sketchier than we already do. Eh, uh, let's just let Detective Matayoshi deal with it. Some jobs are just best left to others. Hmm? You're curious what exactly I... You're curious what exactly was behind where you stopped? That makes two of us, believe me. Actually, while you were on your way back, I decided to look into it a little bit. Apparently, what you found was a Kamashiro Research Lab, of all things. Oh, don't be dense. I told you that area is under the jurisdiction of the central government. That's not the sort of place you wander into to fi for fun. If nothing else, it indicates that Kamashiro and the government have a tighter relationship than what we previously suspected. Going after Kamashiro could well mean that we'd also be ruffling the government's feathers. That's why we can't be hasty right now. We'll do what we can to prepare and cross that bridge when we come to it. This is just a guess on my end, but I imagine it was Kamashiro that changed the password on that door and then rendered it impossible to get open. They probably weren't counting on us being able to actually break in and snoop around. Knowing that, it could well serve as our ace in the hole later when the time does come to confront them, hopefully unawares. But again, let's not worry about hashing out the details until we have to, and just be grateful that we have all that up our sleeve if need be. On that note, I realize this case is technically closed, but what do you say about heading over to Rapongi for me one more time? I don't mean on official business, rather, I'm keen on doing a little independent intelligence gathering for our own internal use. Surely you're interested in knowing why Kemishido has built a research lab underneath the Metropolitan Office too, right? So how about you just walk on through the front door there and see what you can find? Sound good? Yeah, let's go. Alright, but, uh, well, let's see. I don't think we can do anything else here right now. Okay, we can go to the Tokyo Metropolitan Office. Oh, 
Are you here for a tour of the lobby? Please come on inside. You must be confused. Let me explain. Construction on this metropolitan office isn't entirely complete as of yet. Well, it was at one point. That is, until a major firm came in and it was decided the upper floors merited additional construction. As such, while that was going on, the lobby here remains free and open for the public to visit. Did you make it inside the Metropolitan Office? Alright, I get you. So they're all right with you hanging around the lobby. Well, that makes our work a little easier then. Go on in. All you need at this point is a terminal somewhere you can infiltrate their systems. Piece of cake at this stage, I'd say. So once you find a terminal, just slip on in and work your magic like always. Wish I was there to see it myself. Seems like quite the sight. It reminds me of the Tower of Babel in a way. Heh, <laughs> I guess I'm starting to ramble again though. Don't worry about me. Feel free to get back to work now. Alright, let's go inside. Ooh, so fancy. Where's that terminal? There we go. Wait. Is something wrong out there? Oh, you found a terminal that's digital shifting a little? Hmm, if this shift is weak while still prominent enough for you to notice it, it could be a sign this place will turn into a labyrinth later on. Well, for now, try Connect jumping into it. We have no idea what could be inside there, so stay on your feet, all right? Yep, we did it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, oh, there's an item over here. Oh, a couple of rookies. Sonic Void. Oof. All right, team up. Okie dokie. Level 7. Very cool. Alright, we'll get this item and then I think that will be the end of the episode. Bug recovery. Okay, well that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to catching you in the next one. But till then, take care. Bye.